Hi, I'm Willem, and today I want to talk to you about movies and video games. I can see that some of you are already with me. Well, have you ever seen a movie trailer or a commercial for a video game and thought, I have to see that or I need to play that? And why do you think that you feel that way? Well, it's because the sneak peek that you've just seen was so good that you wanted more. That makes me think of today's big idea. Jesus shows us what God's kingdom is like. Jesus is that sneak peek. We can already see that it will be amazing, but I think we'll be blown away once we see the fullness of God's kingdom. Watch this. Hey, welcome back to, thankfully, the last episode of Aaron Eats Progressively Hotter Things. This week, we have a scotch bonnet. To give you reference, this is 70 times hotter than a jalapeno. I don't want to, but here we go. It starts off not that bad, and then it gets worse. <laughs> Yep, that's hot. That's very hot. That's a lot hotter than I thought it was going to be. I'm gonna drink milk. Oh. Hey everyone, it is great to be with you. My name is Aaron. Now, I got married this year. It was absolutely wonderful. The week before our wedding, my fiance and I had another wedding that we went to and it was freezing cold. So we were so worried about our guests being cold. So we bought shawls and we bought space heaters and we wanted to make sure no matter what, it was not going to be cold. As it turns out, we actually had a heat wave on our wedding and it was stupid hot, but we still had the most amazing day. Now, why do I share this? Well, I absolutely love weddings. And did you know that Jesus' first miracle was at a wedding? And this week's big idea is Jesus shows us what God's kingdom is like. So first we started with Jesus, who is God with us and came down and he saves us. Then we had John the Baptist and Jesus, and John was talking about Jesus is the Lamb of God. And then last week we had Andrew and Philip, who when they met Jesus had to share him with everybody. All right, we're gonna read now, we're in John 2. The next day there was a wedding celebration in the village of Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there, and Jesus and his disciples were also invited into the celebration. See, in Jewish culture, wedding celebrations were the best parties. That is where they went for literally days and everyone had an absolute blast. But then we had one of the biggest party fouls. The wine ran out. So Mary, who's Jesus' mother, knows that Jesus should know about this. So she goes to him and says, we're out of wine, what are we gonna do? Because the party is gonna be over. And I absolutely love his response. He turns to his, remember this is his mom, and he says, my time is not yet come. So after Jesus gives his response of it's not yet my time, Mary just basically ignores him and then says to the servants, Jesus will solve this, go do what he wants you to do. All right, let's read what happened next. Standing nearby were six stone water jars used for Jewish ceremonial washing. Each could hold 20 to 30 gallons. So these are pretty big jars. And what's also important to notice is they're used for Jewish rituals, which means they wouldn't have been used for anything like this. In fact, some people would have been upset with Jesus for doing this. But let's see what happened. Jesus told the servants, fill the jars with water. When the jars had been filled, he said, now dip some out and take it to the master of ceremonies. The servants followed his instructions. When the master of ceremonies tasted the water that was now wine, not knowing where it had come from, though of course the servants knew, he called the bridegroom over. A host always serves the best wine first, he said. Then when everyone has had a lot to drink, he brings out the less expensive wine. But you, you have kept the best until now. How awesome is that? Let's put ourselves in the shoes of the servant. Now he has just literally filled up a jar with water and then go ask to serve that to the person in charge of the wedding. If you serve that person a cup of water, he's gonna be like, what are you doing? You're fired. But now that it's wine, he's like, oh, this is the greatest thing ever. Jesus in performing this miracle allowed the wedding celebration to continue, which is cool on its own. But here's the thing is it also shows that God's kingdom is not the normal order of things. I mean, look at it. Usually the, as the master of ceremony said, the best wine would be served first. But in this case, the best wine was served last because that's the wine Jesus was doing. He was doing the opposite of what was normal. Let's read the end of the story. This miraculous sign in Cana in Galilee was the first time Jesus revealed his glory and his disciples believed in him. After the wedding, he went to Capernaum for a few days with his mother, his brothers, and his disciples. This is Jesus' first miracle and it's one of my favorites. 
Not only does Jesus do this in a way that respects his mother, and it doesn't reveal anything about him, but not only that is it gives the disciple a taste of what's to come. And it's probably not a coincidence that later on, Jesus uses the image of a wedding feast to describe the kingdom of God. God's kingdom is like a party that just gets better and better and better as the party rages on. And we talk about God's kingdom about what's to come, but the cool thing is it's happening right now and we're invited into it. And that's the big idea. Jesus shows us what God's kingdom is like. It's great to keep all these ideas of what the kingdom of heaven is like, both now and going forward. And speaking of going forward, that's it with our time together. It has been absolutely wonderful hanging out with you. See you later. And this God story, the miracle of the wine, gave us a taste of what God's kingdom will be. And I love that Jesus' first miracle was performed at a party. Don't you think that this is a hint that heaven will be one big party? We don't know what heaven will look like, but we find some clues in the book of Revelation in the Bible. But let's watch this video, and then we'll chat after that. Growing up, I always wondered what heaven would look like. Was it a place up in the clouds? Was it like those drawings of angels worshiping God? Maybe it would be like a shining city made of gold and ruby. In the Bible, John tells us that God will create a city on a hill surrounded by a glassy sea. The streets are a place where God is worshiped everywhere and the walls are covered in precious jewels. And in this place, there will be no tears, no pain, and no more suffering. While we don't know exactly what heaven or Jesus will look like, we do know the example that Jesus sets for us to live by. And through his words and his story, Jesus shows us what God's kingdom is like and that it can start right here, right now. Jesus shows us how to love one another and when we show kindness and help each other, even with something as small as helping someone cross a street, we are living out the love of Jesus. And amidst all the uncertainty in life, or when we don't know what to do, Father, we can ask God for guidance. Help me. We've seen Jesus ask God the Father to help him. We saw that he made time to pray, and we know that he followed the direction God gave him. So when we need help, or when we have to make choices, we can ask God to help us and show us where he wants us to go. Jesus showed compassion, and he took care of the widows, the poor, those who are considered less important. And if there's one thing I know about God's kingdom, it's that the last will be first and there will always be enough for everyone. We read that those who mourn will be comforted and sadness will not even exist in God's kingdom. But that does not mean we have to wait for someday when we are with God. We can experience that here and now because we can show the love of Jesus to every person we know. God's kingdom isn't something we can fully understand. It's not something we could build without his help. But thankfully, we'll never have to because Jesus helps us. He shows us how to live and how to love, and he shows us what God's kingdom is like. That video was mind blowing. And it reminded me that while heaven is gonna be spectacular, we can experience God's kingdom here and now in the way that we live and love others. If we can live the way Jesus modeled for us, we will get a taste of what God's kingdom is like. Let's break into our small groups and see what this will look like in our stories.